this gives us the opportunity to honor him and all of those who made that sacrifice so that other people didn't have to. It is a very emotional day for us. Growing up in Long Island, New York, Matthew Bayless was always selfless and understood the meaning of serving one's country through his family history. I have grandparents that fought in the First World War. My father was in the Second World War. I was drafted back in 1970 myself. And Matt's mom, Lori, her family has quite a military history too. So Matthew was brought up around military values. Matthew's own calling to serve came on a singular day when he was just 14. The unthinkable happened today. The World Trade Center, both towers gone. And we are all from 9-11 on, he made a decision that he was going to do it. He was going to be in the infantry. He knew that he would be a good soldier. After high school graduation in 2005, Matthew enlisted. By the fall of 2006, he was deployed to Iraq and into combat. He was a saw gunner. So his, his job during times of conflict was to lay down a line of fire. He did come home for a short leave, about 10 days. When he arrived at the airport, he was still, still wearing um, his fatigues that had uh, blood stains on it from his sergeant was killed. He had transformed from a high school graduate to a combat veteran that has seen too much in his 19 years of life already. Too much. Matthew returned, and on May 30th, 2007, his platoon came under heavy fire in Baghdad. His platoon leader had, um, had been shot. Matt's job as a saw gunner was to lay that line of fire so that the rest of his platoon could go in and, and, and pull him out. They were able to take him out, and then at that point, um, Matthew was shot. Matthew Bayless died the next day. He was 20 years old. It's just pure grief. You don't know what to do, what to say, what to think. You, you, you cry. Hmm. And it has hurt for 15 years. It, uh, it'll never change. Matt died doing what he did best and what he loved. And I don't believe that if he was given the choice to go back and do it again, that he would change anything. Fifteen years have passed. The loss remains. But so does the honor. And a decade and a half later, for one family, it takes a new shape. This weekend, millions will have the chance to see Bayless's name atop the windshield of the number 48 car, driven by Alex Bowman. I don't think there are any heroes in sports that can compare to uh, the type of hero that Matthew was. You know, I think uh, anybody that gives their life to save others' lives is much more of a hero than, than anybody in sports could ever be. It's just an honor to have his name on the car. Hopefully we make him proud. Hopefully he can help guide us to, uh, to victory lane. Matthew would be proud, but more so for the others that are with him that are being honored. He would feel that he is honored to be with them. We always have to honor the warrior who has taken upon himself to put himself in harm's way and serve his country. To honor and to remember, always. 
Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.